Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing today? 11 o'clock. You guys have arrived. This is the crazy crowd. You know what I'm saying? I love you guys. I live for the second service on Sundays because I know y'all are excited to be here. You're excited. And if I don't finish up on time, you might kill somebody because you're hungry because it's lunchtime after this. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in the room knows what's up. All right. Well, if we have never met before, my name is Jared and I'm one of the pastors here at the Short Church. And I'm so excited that you are here today. Today is going to be an amazing day as we continue in this series. And we're going to finish up this series called fully alive. And this series has been revolutionary. And really this series talks about who we are as a church and who we believe that, 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 or what we believe that Jesus has promised for every single one of our lives. And we're going to continue talking about that today. In fact, the theme verse for this series is the book, it's in the book of John, it's chapter 10, verse 10. And it says this, it says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy But Jesus, he says this, he says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. That you you may come, you may experience a full life, unlike anything else you'll ever experience in your life. And I I love it so much, and I love what this series has been about and how we've been setting it up. And uh, today, I'm I'm gonna talk about how you can experience that fully alive life. I wanna give you some steps that you can say, you know what, I know for a fact that I'm experiencing a fully alive life. So do me a favor, turn to the person beside you and say, you about to get fully alive up in here. Tell them, tell them, tell somebody, fully, fully alive. So this series has been awesome. And what I want to do is I actually want to bring up a good friend of mine. Worley, can you get up here? Somebody put your hands together for this good looking guy. Mm, I love this guy. Hey, I told Worley that uh, Worley's our worship director here in case you guys didn't know that. Um, now, you, now you know. Um, and everything that happens up here that you see in the, in the services and the worship and the music experience. I mean, he works and prays so hard in his family uh, to make sure that, that he sets an environment where people can encounter God. And what I love about Worley and I love so much about him is that, that he has such a heart, such a genuine heart and such a genuine passion for this. And I told the first service this, is that uh, he actually loves you guys more than I do. Okay, I can promise you, I can promise you that. Okay, and here's, here's how I know. Okay, so Easter, Easter week, the week before Easter, uh, we were talking to Worley and, and, uh, and Annie, his wife, who stands up here, gets to sing with him, do some amazing stuff. One shout out, that's it. Come on, man. Annie, listen, behind every great man's an even better woman, guys. All right, in case you were wondering. All right. So, uh, but we, we were talking and in uh, and, and, and the the process of it, but he's, he is just so, so amazing. And, and Easter, um, I, I'll never forget, Annie said, you know, Worley's been getting up every single day at three o'clock in the morning to pray for Easter. And I knew, I was like, man, I slept till eight every day this week. So I'm just saying, he loves you guys a lot. He does that. Um, but I wanted to talk about Worley after he's gone, because that's kind of what church people do, right? So he's going he's gonna to walk off the stage, then we're going to talk about him a little bit more. But I just, wanted to, I just wanted to tell you thank you, and that I love you, man, that you are awesome, dude. We couldn't do this without you here. I love you, bro. In, in preparation for this message, you know, you always talk to some people close to you when you're about to do something big, when God's about to do something big in your life. Um, you go to those friends that you're close to. And what I love about Worley and one of my favorite things and how I knew that this was a guy that God had put in my life for a very important reason was because the first time that I ever, ever stood up to preach, the week that I was going to preach, he calls me and he goes, hey man, I'm fasting for you this week. And I was like, dude, that's cool. Like, what's that look like? He's like, I'm not going to drink coffee this whole week. And I'm like, I, maybe I should do that too. Man, that doesn't sound good, but maybe I should do that too. And that week we fasted and it was an amazing, an amazing experience. And I'd never done that before in my life. I'd never done that before. And he challenged me to do that in an amazing way. And, and so the same thing is true coming up to prayer, prepare for this week. He asked me, he goes, hey, I know you don't know what you're gonna preach on this weekend, uh, but, but if I can help you with anything, you let me know what it is. And we're texting and we got into a conversation. We started talking about this church and we started talking about, about what we do as a church and about how people can experience a fully alive life. And the goal for what we want to do for every single person that comes here is to experience a life that's changed by Jesus, to experience a life that is fully alive. So we, we talk about it. We're intentional about those things that we do. And we help people know who God is. So every Sunday, we give somebody an opportunity to respond to the message of Jesus, to the message of salvation, the gospel. And we give them that opportunity to do that. And we were talking, and he said, you know what? It seems easy for people. people. People are doing that. It doesn't seem to be a struggle for people to make that decision to follow 
follow Jesus. And then the second thing that we want to see people do is we want them to experience freedom, to find the freedom that God has promised for their lives and to be set free from anything that may be holding them back. And, and people join connect groups and we talk about connect groups as being the greatest way that you will experience that freedom because you get surrounded by people that care about you and that care about the plan that God has for your life and that pray for you and encourage you. And it's huge. And then we started talking about people discovering their purpose and that, that people are designed for a purpose for a reason. And that's where people start to go, well, I don't know if that's really for me. I don't know if, I don't know if God's really gonna do something in my life. I don't know if he really can. And then ultimately as a goal, we want people to live a life that's making a difference, live a life that is fully alive because a life that is fully alive is one that is changing this world for forever. That's changing eternity forever. And the way that that happens is through a relationship with Jesus, through living a fully alive life and through serving and getting involved and being a part and making a difference in other people's lives. Because you will die and I will die, but our our legacy will live on forever. And how we choose to spend that time is very important. So today what we're gonna do is, is kind of unpack that because when we talked about it, we talked about that it's hard for people to step into discovering what their purpose is. And we talked about that it's, it's harder for a lot of people to, to know that they can actually make a difference. And, and you may be in the room saying, well, you know what? I'd love to live a life that makes a difference, that changes the world forever. But you know, I'm just a single mom. Or maybe you're here and you say that, that I, I can't really do, I just work a nine to five job. There's no way that I could make an impact on this world for forever. My life is, is just not good enough. I'm nothing special. I'm nothing special. Well, if you're here today, I want you to know that today this message is going to be for you. That this word is going to be for you. And I want to encourage you that you can make a difference. Your life matters to God in more ways than you could ever dream, ask, or imagine. God wants to do something phenomenal in you and with you. So what I like is that the Bible repeats things over and over again. One of my favorite parts about the Bible is that, okay, so as a parent, what do, what do I hate to do? I have two amazing boys. What do I not like to do more than anything else? I hate repeating myself, right? Any other parents in the room, you hate repeating yourself over and over and over and over and over again, okay? Hate it. I hate doing it, all right? And, but it's a process that has to happen. But what I love about the Bible and what I love about God's word is that when you look at it, you would think, well, it's from God, right? You believe that this is, this is God's word. It comes from him. But what happens is, is the Bible repeats things over and over and over again. You'd think God wouldn't have to repeat himself because he's God. But what I love about it is that he often does. And I believe that it's especially just for me so that I'll get it. Okay, it's not for the rest of you guys. It's just for me because I'm stubborn. So when it comes to a life that is, that is fully alive, a life that, that makes a difference and what the Bible says about people that were designed for a purpose and for a destiny and for a reason. The Bible actually talks about this one topic 52 different times, saying that you are created for a purpose, that you are uniquely made, that God wants to do something in your life and he wants to use you to change the world. 52 different times that's repeated. And I think that that's something that we should all go, okay, I'm listening, God, I am listening now. And Ephesians chapter two, verse 10 is where uh, one of my favorites on the topic of this. And it says this, it says, for we are, are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. See, all of us may struggle with the topic and the idea that, that we can't actually make a difference, that, that our lives might not be that big of a deal. And in, in, the, in the whole expand of the universe, of this world, of the impact, you may be sitting here thinking that, that you're nothing special. But I want you to know that you're God's handiwork. You are created by him to do something that only you can do but you have to believe it. You have to, you have to understand, you have to grow into this possibility. So, so in order for you to do that, I wanna talk about three things today. And we're gonna talk about these three things and I'm gonna break it down. So if you like to get the notes ahead of time, these are your answers to everything you're looking for today. And then, you know, that's it. But don't cash out and go to lunch yet, okay? Because it's not time, all right? But let me tell you, I believe these three things are super important um, for every single one of us to experience. And the first thing is that we have to believe that God has something for us. In order for us to experience a fully alive life, we have to believe that God has something for us. The second thing is we have to discover what that thing is. And we're gonna unpack these in just a few minutes where you can kind of understand it and see what I'm talking about. And then the last thing is we have to grow into that place that he has for us. It's a key part of who we are and how God has wired every single one of us. So today we're gonna unpack these. And the first thing that I want you to write down if you're taking notes is this, is that you have to believe that you are created to make a difference. You have to believe it. No matter what I tell you, no matter, no matter how many times you'll read it over and over again in your life, you have to believe that you were created to make a difference. Because here's the thing, in order for us to accomplish anything in life, we have to first believe that we can. 
in anything that we do, in order for us to accomplish anything, we have to believe that we can do it. So one of my favorite actors, and, and I'm going to use uh, some stories from him that, that are going to unpack this in an amazing way, is Will Smith. Any, any Will Smith fans in the room? Okay, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You guys, you guys like good movies, obviously. That's why you're my favorite service of all time. Okay. Um, but in that process, Will Smith, he is so passionate. He's so excited. He's always, always plays these epic roles, and you're just caught. You're just so bought into this movie that it's real. You know, it's a huge piece of it. And he, he talks about some places and some, from, from statements and interviews uh, that he's had over time. And I want you guys to take a look at this video as we connect in the rest of the series. The first step before anybody else in the world believes it is you have to believe it. There's no reason to have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. Confucius said, he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. Being realistic is the most commonly traveled road to mediocrity. Why would you be realistic? What's the point of being realistic? You have to believe that something different than what has happened. You have to believe that something different can happen rather than feeling like you're at a effect to all the things that are happening. Make a choice. You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide. And then from that point, the universe is going to get out your way. Greatness is not this wonderful, esoteric, elusive, godlike feature that only the special among us are, will ever taste. It's something that truly exists in all of us. I've, I've never really viewed myself as particularly talented. Where I excel is ridiculous, sickening work ethic. While the other guy's sleeping, I'm working. While the other guy's eating, I'm working. There's no easy way around it. No matter how talented you are, your talent is going to fail you if you're not skilled. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. I want to be an idea. I want to represent possibilities. I want to represent the idea that you really can make what you want. I believe that we are who we choose to be. The road to success is through commitment and through the strength to drive through that commitment when it gets hard. It is going to get hard and you're going to want to quit sometimes, but it'll be colored by who you are and more who you want to be. When you wake up in the morning and your life means something to somebody other than you, that you have a purpose, if you don't go do the things that you're going to do, people's lives will suffer. To live in service, not to you, but to live in service to humanity, to live in service to your family, to your church, to your city, to your country, to the world. That is the purest form of joy. If, if you are not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. You can't be scared to die for the truth. The truth is the only thing that's ever going to be constant. It's very simple. This is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it, period. I love, I love his passion. I love Will Smith's desire. I love what he decides to do, and he says that, that that's one of his strengths, that he pursues it with everything that he has. I love at the beginning of that clip what it says is that, that don't have a plan B because Plan A needs to be the only option because if you have a plan B for your life, it'll be where you end up because you'll fall back on it when things get tough. 
Because you'll step back when you don't think that you're going to make it. You'll always go, well, I always have that plan B option. I always have that available. And I can tell you in my own personal life, becoming a pastor was one of those decisions that I had to make where it was all in or nothing at all. Because I fail every single day over and over and over again. But I'm all in to this thing. I'm all into this calling. I'm all into this purpose. No matter what, I'm going to do what it takes. And that's the decision that you have to make in your life. That if you believe God has something for you, then you have to make every bit of the effort to pursue it, to, to grind after that thing until you experience it, until you get to that place. So the number one thing that we have to do is we have to believe that God has something for us. And once you've done that, that's great. And then the next step that that, that would look like would be that you have to discover what it is that God's created you to do. You have to discover it. You have to find out, okay, God, I believe that you have something for me. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it may be, but I, I, now I need to discover what it is. I heard this killer statement uh, from a pastor this past week, was, which was amazing to see. It's Pastor Joe McGee. And this is how he breaks it down for us here. He says, as long as you can live life without knowing God's will for your life, you will. As long as you can go through your life not knowing that God has a plan for it, you will go through it. You will do it over and over again. And I love it because in order for us to understand that, that God has something for us, we have to believe it. We have to believe that he has something for us and then we have to discover more about it and start learning more about it. Because in order for us to experience a fully alive life, a promised life that Jesus has for us, that fullness of life, we have to believe that he's created something for us. Then, then we have to discover what it looks like. We have to start asking questions. We have to start digging into what it may be, how you were uniquely wired and how you're uniquely made. That's why the number one thing that we talk about here every single Sunday is growth track. Growth track, growth track, growth track. If you've, if you've heard growth track before and you've never been to it, you're missing out on something. It's a part of who we are as a church and it's a tool that we give so that you can discover what that thing is that God's designed you for, how he's uniquely made you, how you can have a more intimate relationship with him, how you can have a more intimate relationship with others. And then what my favorite part about it is that when it finishes it up, it gives you a platform to go out and experience that fully alive life. It gives you a next step to become a part of something greater because when you come and you experience church and you say, this is a great place, I love it, it's so fun, it's so encouraging, everything's awesome, and you experience everything that's happening here, you don't know what you're missing because you haven't experienced it for yourself yet. Because let me tell you, the guys that are out in the parking lot when it's 150 degrees outside are not out there because they like the sunshine, okay? We, they live, we live in Florida, hello, somebody, all right? It's everywhere, okay? They're not out there because of that. They're out there because they are the first person that you see when you hit the parking lot. They're the first person, the first contact that you make when you come to this church. And they know that the environment that they set can ultimately help someone encounter Jesus for the first time ever in their life. You can't tell me that that is not an, a powerful place to be in, an important place to be in at a church and to serve. And see, if, you don't, if you've never experienced it for yourself, you don't know what you're missing because that's a key part of it. That's a key part of it because once you've experienced it, once you've tasted it, nothing else will be the same. And no matter what service area, no matter what way you're involved, anything that you see that happens here in, the, in a level with, with serving and volunteering, every single person that has a piece of that gets to take home the fact that they know over a weekend service, somebody's gonna respond to the gospel and they, and they were a part of that life change. And once you've experienced it, it doesn't, it, nothing else will satisfy that. So the growth track is the thing that we talk about that sets that up more than anything else for us. So the first Sunday of every single month starts step one. It's a four-week class. You don't have to take them in order, but it starts at 6.30, and then it's an hour long. One of them's an hour and 15 minutes. We'll give you dessert, coffee, drinks, and we'll take care of your kids, okay? I'm just saying, there is not a better described night for many of you out there, all right? Women, if you haven't had a date with your husband, come to Grow Track. I'll make sure you get one. We'll get you set up, okay? We'll do that. But Growth Track's a part of that because we want to help you have that platform where you can experience that. And that's where it starts. So, so we have to grow into the place that God has for us. So the first thing is we have to believe that God's designed us for something. The second thing is we have to discover what it is. And then the third thing is that we have to grow into the place, grow into that place that God has for you. 
So now that you believe and you've discovered what it is, now we have to take that step and grow. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. The world's best, at, best at, athletes, well, I could say it, right? The world's best, it's never coming out. The greatest athletes in the world, how about that? Yeah, get some. The greatest athletes in the world don't become the best overnight. It doesn't happen. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes commitment. They have to believe in themselves. They have to grow. They have to have a desire. The most successful people in the world don't just fall into success. You can't, you know, many people are not like, well, it just happened. I just woke up one day and I became a millionaire. You know, it's no big deal. It just happened overnight. It doesn't necessarily happen in your life. But the one key thing that every one of those have in common is that in, in every, single, every single area is that they don't do life alone. Those people, those successful people, they're connected to other people that believe in them, that encourage them, that pray for them, that may, that may help grow them into the place, challenge them, and help them get to the place that God has for their lives. One of the, I heard this motivational speaker put it this way, okay? And let me just tell you guys right now, Charlie Tremendous Jones, okay? You don't get that name by accident, okay? It just doesn't happen. Like, you can just start calling me Tremendous from now on out. Just call me Tremendous. That's it. It just doesn't work that way. That's not how it works. He says it this way. He says, five years from now, you'll be the same person you are today, except for the people that you meet and the books that you read. Five years from now, you and I will be the same person that we are today, except for the people that we meet and the books that we read. See, we'll all look different based on how we grow, based on how we invest our time, based on the people that we spend time with in our lives, based on the relationships that we have. It's up to us. It's a key part of who we are. And the Bible explains it this way in the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter, or, yeah, chapter 27, verse 17. And it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. That in order for us to grow, we have to start doing life together with other people. In order for us to get to the place that God has for us, we have to start doing life with other people. And you may be here, and, and if you work a full-time job, you spend most of your time with people that you work with. That's a normal process in life. But how much do those people care about you? How much do those people care about your success? How much, uh, how much do they care about the place that God has for you and challenging you to get to that place? How encouraging are you? Pastor TJ talked last week about how it was so key that in his life he had people that he was connected to that would remind him when things were, were tough, when the moments were difficult in life of God's plan and God's purpose for his life. That would, that would build him up, that would lift him up and encourage him. And that's why I brought Worley up here because I wanted you to see somebody that, that without guys like him, without guys like Pastor TJ in my life, I wouldn't be standing here today talking to you about it. First hand I've experienced it. Because there's something happens when life gets tough and you want to give up and you just say, you know, I'm going to hang it up. I don't want to do it anymore. I've always, I've always thought about that plan B option. I think I'm going to test that out. When you have somebody around you that cares about you enough, they'll say, no, 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 no. That's not what you're doing. You're going to get back in there. You're going to do it. God has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. And that's why we talk about connect groups. So you may have some people in your life that you're close to, but you have to ask yourself, do they encourage you in a healthy way? Are they praying for you spiritually? Are they, are they lifting you up or are they tearing you down? And the reason why we have Connect Group signups is so that people can get together with other people that, that you can be open and honest with, that you can build relationships with, and then you can say, I'm dealing with some problems in my life. And they're going to say, I love you enough to help you get through it. Not to push you down. We're going to get there. You're going to get there because God has a promise for your life. We have to have that. So that's why the signups are, are happening right now outside as you go out. You can sign up for a Connect Group and get involved in a group of people that are doing life together. It's a key to our growth. So what I love about that, that verse in the Bible is that it's got some, some hardship in there. It's got some things in there that you kind of go, well, I don't really know that I like it, but you might not know that. So as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Do you guys know how that process happens, how iron would sharpen iron? It doesn't happen because of rainbows and ponies and they do just get together and it's magical. And then, wow, it's sharp. It happens through friction. It happens through continuous pain, friction, friction, time. And over and over and over again, it becomes sharper and sharper and sharper. It's important for us in our lives to have some people that care enough about us spiritually, that care enough about us to encourage us spiritually, but at the same time will knock us upside the head when we're doing something stupid. 
We all need that. I know I need it over and over again. Because I'll get distracted by something that has no value on my life or has no value in the long haul of my life. And I need to get put right back in that place. And those people that you're close to, those people that that will be with you spiritually, that will care about the plan that God has for your life spiritually, they'll be the ones that remind you of that place and get you back to that position. So it's not always fun. It's not always delightful. Most of it is. It's good stuff. But every once in a while, you got to remember that friction. So when you're looking for friends, sometimes it's not look good to look for the people that act just as stupid as you do sometimes or, or are as crazy as you are. or do this Because those, those friends are great. you got to have them. But you got to have those friends that are tough on you. You know what I'm saying? They kind of rub you the wrong way sometimes. Because those are the friends that are going to take you to the place that God has for your life. They're the ones that are going to challenge you over and over again. And they're going to help you grow. So... The last thing that, that's kind of going to wrap all of this up, and it's really a big question that you'd have to ask yourself, is, is why do I need to do this now? Why now? What needs to happen so that I can, uh, I can do this now? What's at risk if I don't start doing this? And the answer is, it's your joy. It's ultimately you experiencing the fully alive life that Jesus has promised for you. So what is at risk for you? That fully alive life. What happens if you, don't go, if you don't go after that thing that God has called you to do? If you don't learn about it, if you don't grow into it, what's at risk? It's that fully alive life. It's the way other people depend on you. It's the way, the way your family will grow up and reflect who you are. It's the legacy that you leave behind you. It's key to who we are. But it's often one of the biggest lies that I think every one of us can get trapped by is that time is always on our side. That, that we, we go, you know what, I've got time. I've got time, I'm going to retire soon and then I'll be able to get my life together. Or I'm, 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 you know, I'm still young, I've got many days ahead of me and I can, I just, I can do everything I want to do. I've got my dreams, but right now I'm just a little busy. I've got to get this stuff done. I need to, I need to get this focus here because later on I can, I can work on good relationships with friends. Later on I can get my marriage straight. Later on I can get my finances straight. Later on I can get to that place that God has for me. I've got time. But time isn't on our side. And as I was preparing for this this week, I got some, uh, some upsetting news. So I just want to fair warn you guys, this is not happy part of the message. We'll get, we'll get back to the happy part. But did you know the average American lives 27,375 days? 27,375 days. You go, man, that's a lot of days. That looks good. I'm 28 years old. 28 years old. I've lived over 10,220 days already. That hurts, doesn't it? The older people in the room are like, I hate you. Jerk, just a jerk. You just remind me how old I am. I'm not, I'm not reminding you of that because I want to put you down, but I want you to see, can we all agree that time is running out? Can we agree that it's going by pretty quick? It's flying by, as a matter of fact. Time is flying by for every single one of us. So what's at risk? It's your time. What's at risk if you don't make a decision to move now? It's your time. It's very easy for us to get caught up in the next week's going to be a great week. Tomorrow's going to be a great day. Next month, I'm going to be good. Next year, my marriage is going to be fantastic. I'm going to retire in 15 years and it's going to be the best years of my life. I might kill myself trying to get there, but it's going to be good when I get there. We have to place the value of time in our lives, every single one of us. And we have to be reminded of how valuable that time is every single day. Because time will run out, guaranteed, for all of us. Take a look at this next video I have for you guys. Today is just another day. It's the sort of day offer you chances what if you just had one more day what would you do differently how much time have you already spent worrying instead of doing something that you love Somebody should tell us right at the start of our lives that we're dying. Then we might live life to the limit. 
every minute of every day. Whatever you want to do, do it now. There are only so many tomorrows. I say to you that if you're driven by anything other than your love, than your spirit, and your desire to grow and expand, if you're driven by your need to please others, if you're driven by your fear, if you're driven by your past, it's time to free yourself. And the way to do it is decide. Decide consciously what you want your life to be about. Our life is dynamic. It's constantly changing. But it comes with the decision that you're going to divorce the story of your past, the lies you've been telling yourself, that you should change. And you're going to enter into this new life where you must change. You're going to go from that should to a must. So why don't you start today? Why don't you make a decision that you're not going to be this person anymore and you are going to be on a new path with the decision that you make today? Decide consciously what's the purpose of your life. Something simple. Something you can live every single day. I challenge you to hold yourself to a higher standard. I challenge you to realize that you're here for a purpose. There's something for you to do and be here. You might die tomorrow, you might die in six weeks, you might die in six months, you might die in six years. It doesn't matter how long you're gonna live, what's gonna matter is how are you gonna live while you're here. What is the special plan for you? You've got to discover the purpose of your life. There is a plan. There's something here for you that's different than anybody else in the world, and you've got to discover what it is. Just trust your instinct and say, what is it? It was simple, it was clear, and I was living your day. Why am I here? And you've got to know what that is for you. That is what will help you to make the decisions. That will give you the motivation to get up early and stay up late. That'll make you connect with people in a way you've never connected before, but you gotta know what are you doing it all for? What do you really want? We get one opportunity in life. One chance in life to do whatever you're gonna do. So what are you gonna do with this time? What are you going to do today? I love that question. What are you going to do with this time? What are you going to do with the time that you have left? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. The book of James chapter four, verse 14 is one of my favorite verses. And, and I learned early in my life about this verse and the power of this verse, because when I was young, I was afraid of dying. I was afraid that I wasn't going to live the life to the fullest. I wasn't going to fully get to enjoy every bit of life. But I love how this verse breaks it down. It says, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while and then it's gone. See, time may be running out for every one of us, but the good news is it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. Yet you're still here. You are still here today and nobody in this room is stuck. I don't care where you are in your life. I don't care what situation you may be in. Nobody is stuck. Don't get caught up in the lies that it's easy for us to believe over and over again, that you've made too many mistakes, that you don't have what it takes and that you'll never accomplish that dream that God's put inside of your heart. You have to believe it. You have to look forward and not get caught in the past. Philippians 3, verse 12 through 14 says it this way. And I love how Paul breaks this down for us. He says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. He says, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. 
Paul's saying, I'm not perfect, nor will I ever be. But the thing that I'm choosing to do today is to not let my past hold me back. I'm moving forward. I'm moving in the direction that God has for my life. I'm making the decision to go the distance. I'm not going to promise you that life's going to be easy because, in fact, it's not. The Bible says the opposite. It's going to be difficult. But on the other side of that difficulty, on the other side of that fear, on the other side of all those things that hold us back from taking those next steps, is God's promise for a fully alive life. Every one of us may get to a place where we feel comfortable. And we may like it that we're comfortable and where we're at in our life. But you would have to say deep down inside, when you feel comfortable, you don't really feel fully alive. Outside of that comfort zone, just outside of that comfort zone, just past that fear, that's the place that's a fully alive life. That's the place of fulfillment that Jesus is talking about. That's the promise that he has for our lives. So it all starts with a choice. It starts with a decision that you have to make. No matter what's said, no matter how many times we talk about something, no matter how many times we do something here at this church or we give you an option to respond, it's up to you to, dis- to say, you know what? I'm tired of letting life pass me by. I'm gonna do something today. I'm gonna move forward today because time's running out. Today's the day that I'm gonna do something. So on that connect card that you're taking notes on the back side of, on the front, I just want you to look down at the bottom. There's some decisions that are down there and there's some next steps. And if you've been coming here for any length of time, I want you to ask yourself, number one, am I experiencing a fully alive life? Do I feel genuinely fully alive? And if the answer is no, then you need to make a step in that direction today. Maybe you need to go to the growth track. Maybe you need to get into a connect group and say, you know what? I'm tired of not, not knowing what my purpose is. I need to go find out. Maybe I know my purpose, but I'm not, I'm not serving in that area. I need to get involved on a team. Maybe I need to start doing life with people. I don't really like talking to people, but I need to make the decision to get there and start doing life with other people because doing it alone ain't working. But the most important decision that you'll make in this room is the ones that are there, that are the first ones that you see. It says, I'm committing my life to Jesus Christ. I'm recommitting my life to Jesus Christ or I'd like to be baptized. The first, the first and the most important thing that you can do is to commit your life to following Jesus, is to having a relationship with him because Jesus gives the promise of a fully alive life. In this whole series, we've talked about how no matter where you look, you won't experience it anywhere else. And you can go back and you can catch those series, all, all of the messages online and you can recap. But what you'll see is that no matter what place you get of success, no matter what place you'll get in, in, in fame and fortune, your life will always be missing something. And that's what Jesus has said. I've come so that you have life and have it to the fullest. So you can experience it in the fullest. So it starts with having a relationship with him. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna give you an opportunity to respond. And I'm not gonna make you stand up. I'm not gonna make you say anything uncomfortable or do anything weird. I just want to ask, I want you to ask yourself, have I made the decision that I wanna follow Jesus? That I want to experience this fully alive life? Because in order for us to, to get to that place, there's separation. There's, it's called sin, that imperfectness. And God knew that. That's why he sent Jesus to come and pay for that, for that separation, to bridge that gap between us and God. And he did that through Jesus and the, and the price that Jesus paid by giving his life so that we could experience it fully. But it starts with belief. It starts with believing. So would you pray with me with all heads bowed and all eyes closed? Nobody moving around. Right now, I just want to give you the opportunity to respond. If you're, if you're here today and you would say that, you know what, Jared, I haven't experienced a fully alive life and I want a taste of that. Then I'm going to pray a prayer that you can, you can follow along with me and pray for yourself. And I want you to take the steps forward to move into the place that God has for your life. It's not about the words that you say. It's about the commitment that you make. That you say, you know what? This isn't a plan A and B option. This is plan A and I'm committing to it for the rest of my life. And I want to do it today. The prayer is simple. It looks just like this. 
It's Jesus, I give you my life. I know I'm not perfect. I know I failed time and time again, but I ask God that you'd forgive me. I believe that you came so that I could experience full life. And I'm turning away from this old life. I'm not gonna let time pass me by anymore. I wanna start living life your way, a life that you've promised, a life of fulfillment. Help me to live this life and to make a difference. Help me to experience a fresh and new life with you. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody says, amen. Thank you for taking the time to view our sermon. Our goal is to spread God's word and to share his good news with you. At the end of our message, we offered a prayer. If this was the first time you prayed that prayer or the first time in a long time, we would love to know so we can pray specifically for you and with you. Please drop us a line at hello at the shortchurch.com. We won't spam you or inbox you or add you to a mailing list. We would love to send you a 21 day reading plan. Thanks again for watching our message here. We'd love to see you in person on Sunday morning.